Hey everybody, it's been a while since I made a couple video, a video. I've been traveling. We had to go back to my house in the States. I was up in New York. I was down in Virginia, to Virginia Beach, uh, the whole, uh, even up in Washington for a while. I had a bunch of video on a camera and the camera was stolen. My camera has been stolen. It had the SIM card, which had, it had a memory card, which had all of the information and a bunch of videos in it. So unfortunately I don't have the video that I was going to use to make more videos for you. So what we're going to do is we're back in Jamaica now and I wanted to go over the homestead plan. The plan, actually the food forest plan. The plan of the food forest. How I designed it, why I did it, the way I did it. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a look at it through SketchUp. Here we're going to zoom into the homestead for any of you who don't know where we are. We are in Jamaica. And here's the location as seen by Google Earth. Now I like to use SketchUp. I use SketchUp for everything, anything and everything. And uh, the great thing about SketchUp is you can import images from Google Earth. So here's our Google Earth image. Here's the canal and it continues off. Here's where the where we started the banana circle in the food forest back here. Here's where the house is, the, the existing structure and as you see this is before this was taken before we cleared it. Now we're going to take a look. We're going to come over here to SketchUp and this is the exact same image been cropped to get rid of everything that isn't ours. You know, here's the canal. I put in a couple of lines for easier easier drawing. This line here shows the canal and since the goal is to put this food forest parallel to the canal, what I'm doing is I run this line. It allows me to run parallel lines off of it easily without trouble. It just makes it a lot easier. Here's this line shows the canal this way. And this shows the separation between this piece of property and our property here in the homestead. Now I have a series of layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. We're going to hide that. And then we're going to come in tight just to the food forest. Because this is what we're talking about. Now the great thing about SketchUp is it's a 3D modeling program. It is free. They do have a pro version that you pay for, but it is free if you're only doing this sort of thing. With it. And uh, all I did is I created a stick and put a couple circles on top of it to give us a 3D representation of a tree. Now these four trees represent the main canopy or overstory. These lower trees. These are the sub canopy or the understory. Now I have set up layers so what we're going to do is we're going to turn everything off and we're just going to look at these four trees. And what we have now this is a jackfruit. I labeled this one but I will label all of these eventually. I just uh, for purposes of doing this demonstration I haven't labeled them all. But we're going to go in here. We're going to put a label on this one. I want to show you this because it's really quite simple. SketchUp is a fantastic program. Now, all we're doing is we're just putting a label on it. Now, this is a star apple. All right, and that, that's it. Now we have got this tree label. So we have this one labeled, this is a jackfruit, this is a star apple, this is a naceberry, and this is a lemon drop mango steed. I'll eventually have them all labeled. For now, I haven't done it. We're just showing you how this works. Now, the next thing we need is the subcanopy trees. Now, these are smaller trees that can handle being under the, under the watchful eye of another tree. So we have our four main canopy trees. Now, here's where our lower trees is, are. This one here is where I put the cashew. This is a dwarf cashew. It will not get big. 
And over here is a star fruit tree. The star fruit tree, again, is another tree does not get big. These are the trees that we've planted. The rest of these are primarily citrus. They're all different types of citrus, but citrus trees, again, they get reasonable, but they're not huge dominating trees. They are a great subcanopy tree in the tropics, which is obviously where we are. Now, another thing we have, we have a shrub layer. Now, this representation only shows three of the layers. We've got this, the canopy, the subcanopy, and the shrub layer. Now, for easy viewing, we're going to get rid of the canopy and the subcanopy. We're going to stay right here. I want you to look at because we can fit a lot of shrubs in this area. Shrubs are small; they don't take up much space. If they fill a perfect spot, the thing is, we haven't planted this many. In fact, if you remember, we only planted maybe six. We planted a few guava, a few pomegranate. That's about it. However, that's going to change. It's March, and in March we plant gunga pea. In Jamaica they call it gunga pea. The rest of you may know it as a pigeon pea. But it's a shrub, and it's perfect timing. This is when we plant it. It is a legume, so it will improve the soil as it fills this space. So we're doing multiple things with one plant. This is going to be all gunga pea not all gunga, but primarily gunga pea this time. As the gunga pea grows, when we harvest, we'll cut it, we'll mulch it, and we'll plant guavas and those sort of things. But for now, this is primarily going to be all gunga pea. Now this does not show the other four layers because, well, it's a little harder to show them. But we could. <clears throat> For, this purpose, for the purposes of this representation, we're not going to, though. All I'm trying to do is show you how you can use a tool like this to put everything in place. You put these in place before you get in putting things in the ground. This gives you the opportunity to see. Now, let's say for a minute we want this tree Let's say this tree is going to be bigger, and we need to stretch it. We need to make it bigger. We can do that. I have to figure out what tool it is. Yeah, this is it. Now we have a tree. We can show how big this tree is. Now this tree's a bigger tree. How does it fit? How does it interact with the other trees around it? Is that a good place to put a tree that's that size? Now, personally, I haven't messed with these yet, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it the way it was for now. I'd like to see these trees now that I think about it a little bit bigger, but it really isn't important. But you could. This is the advantage. You can take and put these trees at full size. You take a make a representation of the tree when it's full size. You can put it in your landscape and see how it interacts with everything else. You learn what's it going to look like at full size. Now, granted, it's, it's hard to say exactly what this is going to look like. But it'll give you how it reacts with everything else, which is the important part. How does it react with everything else? So here's a, this is a, what I'm trying to say is you can use these tools. My grandfather would have killed or something like this when he was planting stuff out. I know my father would have because you know, my father is about as anal as I am. And he was real, you know, this is geek world, guys. We're, we're uh, using the tools at our disposal to make the world better. This allows us to do design. It allows us to do a lot of different things. And with the, with the tools available to us in SketchUp, we can design our food forest before we plant anything in the ground. When I took this out, when I went out to the property, I had an image of this on my tablet, and I used that to show me where everything is when we planted everything out. So we know where each of these trees is and what it is. 
so we can reference it. And it tells us where we're going to plant. All I needed to do was find out where to put these four trees, which is easy. Once I had those four trees in the ground, I put everything else, planted everything else in relationship to those trees. And there's the beginning of a food forest. Before I put it, before I did a single thing with the food forest, this is what I did. I sat down on the computer, spent a little bit of time drawing this up. And now it's here forever. What I can do, what I'll be able to do now, is as I bring the swale down the canal, I will be able to extend this food forest to see how it's going to interact with everything before I start putting things in the ground. So when you put a tree in the ground and it's only two feet tall, you don't know exactly how it's going to look. So you need to have some idea. And this is a good way to give you that idea. Anyway, I hope it helps, guys. I hope you guys realize what we're trying to do uh, and how we're trying to do it. I will be back with more videos. Um, like I said, my camera was stolen. And with it, a whole bunch of video clips that I had intended on using. And since I was uh, overseas at the time, the kind of headache was complicated everything. But I will be posting more videos. I have soon I wanted to go over the design of the homestead and of the food forest how I did it because I really think this is a powerful tool it's a very useful tool and I hope you guys enjoy it if you have any questions let me know I'd uh, if you like this sort of thing I'd like to go I could go over how uh, the SketchUp works for other things so uh, any questions let me know and we'll we'll see where we go from there. Thanks everyone. Have a good one. God bless. Be safe.